And now it's half past eight. Saturday night theatre. from that window. Don't touch me or I'll jump. We present The Inquiry by Charlotte Hastings, starring Dame Flora Robson as Laura Fenn with Vanessa Lee as Francis Treadgold. The scene is a women's open prison in the Midlands. The Inquiry. Get off that sill. If you touch me, I'll jump. Keith, Keith, the assistant governor's coming up. Oh, go down and organise a safety net, Collins, quick. Yes, Chief. Now, come along, Orma. You've never given any trouble before. Keep away from me. Oh, Miss Treadgold. All right, Robin, leave it to me. Mm. Well, Kate, it's a 50-foot drop. If you want to kill yourself, that's your choice. But your husband will have to live with it after. And the children. <laughs> yes. Please, Miss Treadgold, these flowers has just come for the governor. Oh, thank you, Marcy. Uh, Chief, yes. will you put them on the table over there? Uh, yes, Miss Treadgold. And, Marcy, fetch some coffee. Hot and very strong. Get Gow to make it. Gow, my coffee? Do you want it mucked up with an egg whisk and parsley floating on the top? Marcy. Yes, Chief. Move. Yes, Chief. Right away, Chief. Oh, I'm coming now, Marcy. Anyway. I can't go any quicker. I'm old now. Uh, Miss Oates. Yes, Mr. Goat. Will you bring up the correspondence? Yes. We're a little disorganized here, but don't let it worry you. Thanks. <laughs> well, come down when you're ready, Kate. I shan't ask you again. Look, whatever is wrong, it can't be worth killing yourself or getting maimed, which might be worse. I suggest we sit down and talk things out. We're here to help you. Just remember that. Yes. Oh, come in, Marion. The governor will be back from London at any moment. Are we fairly clear? What on earth? Uh, take no notice. So, what have we got? Uh, these are for the governor's signature. Right. Uh, a couple of orders, if you would just initial them. Next. Well, I could cope with this, but I think you'd better see it first. What? Oh, no. Not the professor again. I'm afraid so. I suppose he means oh, well. Oh, I'm but... sure he does. I'm equally sure our inmates wouldn't particularly appreciate a monthly illustrated lecture on the significance of the male element in early Greek sculpture. <laughs> they might appreciate the slides. <laughs> yes, indeed. A very well-developed gentleman. <laughs> oh, good heavens, within ten minutes we'd be sedating the entire audience. Oh, I think the usual reply. Yes. The governor regrets, but thank you most sincerely. You know, make it flowery. Oh, then file it and hope that's the last of him. <sighs> now, anyone on report? Uh, one. Gal. She's specially asked to see the governor. Well, that's her privilege. Oh, has Mrs. Fenn got a memo? In the file. Uh, well, anything else? Well, only the governor's personal letters. Ah. Oh, come in. Oh, thank you, Marion. Thank you, Miss Redgold. Morning, Miss Oates, dearie. Good morning, Marcy. Blimey. She's still up there. Now, that will do, Marcy. Just uh, put the tray here. Please, Miss. What is it? You wouldn't have a fag, Miss, dear, would you? How many have you got already? Not a whiff. I swear it. I'll turn out my pockets, if you like. Now, the last time I remember, you had them in your pants. Not any more, Miss, dear. When they get warm, they lose their flavour. Oh, really? <gasps> Here, take one out of the governor's box. Now, one only. Thank you, Miss Dear. You're all right, you are. Miss Dear, you wouldn't have a king size, would you? You can cut them in half and make two. No, I would not. Take that and get out before I take it back. Yes, Miss. And bless you, Miss. For a good kind... Uh, move, Marcy. Yes, miss. Just come over here, Kate, and have some coffee. Then we'll see no. what we can do. Let me alone! Kate, stop no, it! Let me alone! Not from there! there. Not that window! Me. Kate, stop it! Stop bundling, you silly girl. Oh, Kate, this will not do. Get up from the floor. 
Good morning, Francis. Will you close the window, please? Chief, wait just a moment. Uh, yes, madam. Get up, Kate. I'm sorry to be so late. The London train was delayed again. Kate, I told you to get up. Kate, I don't speak merely for the pleasure of hearing myself. I told you to get up. Stand here, in front of the desk. Now, what is all this about? Answer me, Kate, and stand up straight when I speak to you. That's better. I'll ask you again. Why? I wanted to die. That's easy to say, but seldom expedient. And if you answer one question by posing another, we shall get nowhere. So, why did you want to die? It doesn't matter. But it does. You have only eight weeks before release. Have you had bad news from home? Have you been feeling ill? You know you may ask to see me or the assistant governor at any time. Yes, madam. But you haven't done so. Chief, how recently did you see her before all this happened? Uh, at breakfast, madam. Did she seem upset in any way? No, madam. I, I spoke to her about some work. She was perfectly normal. What was her routine after breakfast? Well... She should have cleaned her room and reported to her working party for gardening duties. And what happened then, Kate? Kate, take your hand from your face. Oh, where did you get that bruise? Hold up your head and push your hair off your face. Kate, at once, please. Uh, have you wrenched your arm? Let me see. Uh, uh, Very well. You may sit down, uh, here in front of the desk. Now, take off your cardigan and unfasten your dress. Please, madam, don't make me. It would be more dignified if I didn't have to ask the chief officer to do it. Come along, Kate, be sensible. Thank you, Kate. Chief, take her dress down off her shoulders. Come along, uh, now. Oh, oh that's no. It. Who did this, Kate? Are you going to tell me? <laughs> Very well. Hello, hospital? This is the governor. Is Dr. Graham there this morning? Good. This is an emergency. Uh, please ask her to come to my office at once. She had better bring a sedative. Thank you. Just sit quietly, Kate. Francis, we can't hold things up. Let's look through this mail. Here. This is yours, I think. Thank you. And these Miss Oates can deal with. Oh, have you done anything about the food tasting this morning? Well, as you were delayed, I, I went down myself. Thank you. Any comments? No. Uh, I did notice Cook seemed a bit more doer than usual. <laughs> It'll wear off. It always does. Come. Good morning, Governor. What's to do? Good morning, Dr. Graham. Just have a look at Kate, will you? Mm -hmm. Chief? Hello, Kate. Oh, my, my. We've been in the wars, haven't we? <sighs> All right now, dear. Just relax. Chief, could we have a glass of water, please? Yes, Doctor, at once. Now, have a look at your back. All right. <sighs> All right. I won't touch you. Right. Hmm. Now, turn to the light. Let me see your face. Uh, well, you're lucky, my girl. It won't be a black eye. Now, tilt your head back while I look at your eyes with this wee torch. Mm. Any headache? No. Oh, good, Here's good. the water, Doctor. Thank you, Chief. Now, just dress her up again and give her three of these tablets with the water. All right, Doctor. And keep her warm. Nasty little business, Governor. Do we know who did it? Not yet. So you'll have to find out. Yes, is she badly hurt? No, no. Good deal of bruising and shock, of course. But no real head injury. Uh, but I think we'll have her in hospital for 24 hours. Settle her down. May I talk to her first? About a quarter of an hour? It shouldn't do any harm. Just go easy. Give her a hot drink. Some of your coffee there. Thank you. Francis, I'll see you later. We shall have to look into this. I expect you'll want me to. Mm. Well, well. All in a day's work. Now cheer up, Kate. You'll live. Oh, doctor, can I get a moment? Of course. 
Chief, madam? Uh, will you tell Miss Collins to come in about a quarter of an hour and take Kate over to hospital? Yes. Tell her to bring a warm coat. Yes, madam. Pour yourself a cup of coffee, Kate. And pour one for me while I get your file. Here we are. Hmm. You're not typical, are you? This record. Intelligent. Educated. I see you have a university degree. It hasn't counted for much, has it? It will in the future. And you do have a future. So many people here have absolutely nothing. In spite of all we try to do. Well now, Kate. Are you going to tell no, me... No, madam. Don't ask me, please. You realise I can't let it pass. There will have to be an inquiry. For God's sake, isn't there enough misery in this place already? Let it go. Accept it as part of my punishment. No, I can't. Why not? It, it is part of my punishment. Everyone knows prisoners hate another prisoner who's... Kate. Who's, who's killed her own child. The circumstances were not normal. Neither was the child. Does that give me absolution? It gave you a sympathetic hearing and a light sentence. The sentence isn't in the law. It's in the mind. For someone like you, perhaps... But you mustn't carry it with you forever. No one has the right to take a life, however helpless and distorted. You were driven out of your mind by an intolerable and pitiful burden. One day, please God, a more sane and enlightened society may find a better way. You're very compassionate. Are you never torn between what you want to do and what you know you must? Inevitably. How do you decide? One falls back on the rules. The great and glorious letter of the law. Which brings us back to this inquiry. You should tell me... You want me to name someone. And that someone will be punished and humiliated and it will be my fault. Always, always my fault. Kate, calm yourself. Don't ask me. Kate. That's better. Drink your coffee. Tell me, why history? History? Your degree. Why did you read history? I've always been interested in people. And history's safe. Safe? All the emotions are in the past. As our own will be eventually. It's a comforting thought. No emotions, good or bad, are comforting. We should have been born without them. The Lord, in his infinite wisdom, created us as we are. We can only trust him that he knew what he was doing. You believe in God? Well, I find it difficult to believe that we evolved entirely from some amorphous blob of jelly. That may be faith. It may be arrogance. Come. I've come for warmer, madam. Oh, thank you, Miss Collins. Help her on with that coat. Now, Kate, I want you to rest in hospital, and then I shall change your work. If you want to speak to me... About anything at all, just ask sister. Yes, madam. Thank you. And madam, I'm very sorry. Well, just take it easy, Kate. Run along. Smartly there. Forward and out. Oh, sorry, Miss no. Oates. I didn't see you. No, that's all right, Miss Collins. Good morning, Governor. Come in, Mary, and sit down. We've a lot to do. Yes, madam. This business of Walmer, we have to arrange an inquiry... Uh, tomorrow at 2.30 in this office. Yes. Send memos, I'll sign them, to Miss Treadgold, uh, the chief officer, mm -hmm. Dr. Graham and the chaplain. Got that? Yes, madam. And send a separate note to the chaplain. Ask him to have lunch with me first, one o'clock, yes. in my sitting room. And we'd better get in a good supply of cigarettes for Dr. Graham. But I must admit, this chain-smoking... What on earth's that? Valentine taking the laundry round. Her little cart needs new tyres. Oh, for heaven's sake, indent for a new set. It's nerve-wracking. <laughs> I have, madam, but I'll follow it up. Now, uh, the meeting tomorrow. I'll leave you to arrange the chairs and so on. Yes. C. Walmore's record file is on my desk. And, um... Ask Miss Probin for a list of everyone in the gardening party. Right. 
I shall want you here to take notes. Yes, madam. Now, just look at this private mail, and then you can get along. Oh, by the way, madam, have you seen your flowers? Flowers? I told Marcy to bring them up. Oh, here they are. Now, who would be sending me flowers? Is there a card? Uh, no, there's a... a note. Why, it's from Mrs. Truscott. Mrs. Truscott? That hard case. <laughs> Shall I read it? Yes, read it out while I sign this. Uh, dear madam... The lady what you told me about has given me the job. Oh, oh. good. <laughs> I clean the house and answer the phone. No cooking. The cook is a good sort. I got my own room and time off it is like heaven. Oh, <laughs> I hope to keep straight for you and stay same. Yours respectfully, Mrs. Ada Truscott. Well. <laughs> oh, there's a P.S. Uh, dear madam, I send you these flowers. I know you like them and bless you for all you've done. Oh, they must have cost her a month's salary. I must write a personal note. I'll give it to you later. And we'll put these in water. No, no, let's get Gull to do it. She does them beautifully and it'll please her enormously. Oh, madam, I'm sorry. What is it? Gull's on report. Oh, no, not again. The usual thing? Mm, I'm afraid so. Anyone else? No, only Gal. Then I must fit her in. Let's see. Um, will you see the chief officer? Mm -hmm. Ask her to bring Gal up in about ten minutes. Right. Then you might see Miss Treadgold. Ask her to come and see me about twelve. Yes, madam. Is that all? For the moment, thank you. Come in. Please, Gatna, dear. Can I have the coffee, Chai? Take it, Marcy. Off you go, madam. Very well, madam. Thank you. Thank you, Gatna, dear. And my word, with all that arabaloo this morning, I forgot to do your dusty. Just look at that silver box. I'll do it now. I got me rag. <sighs> there. Coming up lovely. Put it down, Marcy, at once. Why? And shake the cigarettes out of that duster. Some people got... Ears and eyes in places where they've no right to have them. That will do. And don't try that trick on me again. I've got to keep me handy, ma'am. There were nine cigarettes in that box. There are only eight now. Put that last one back. Ma'am, Miss Treadgold gave me that this morning. Is that the truth? On me oath, ma'am. I swear by your mighty God that the evidence I shall give will that be... That will do. Now listen to me. Ma'am. Because of your age, you are treated very leniently here. But if you persist in this petty pilfering, I shall have to punish you severely. Is that clear? Yes, Governor, dear. So, remember. Come in. Good morning, Governor. Now take the tray and move. Yes, ma'am. Going right away. Yes, Governor, dear. Hello, Padre. I won't keep for a moment. I was over at Wellesley all morning, and I have only just heard. About Kate? Who from? Uh, the chief officer. Then you had the correct information. Well, I, I just wanted to know if there's anything I can do. Would you like me to see Kate? Do you think she might confide in me? Uh, I very much doubt it, but please do see her. Have a word with Dr. Graham first. Well, naturally. Uh, is there any other way, uh, any way at all, I can be of help? Could you be free tomorrow from midday on? You will have a note from Miss Oates, so I won't go into details. Well, certainly, only too glad. This, this is a wretched business, Laura. I'm sorry. We've met it before. Unfortunately. But one is always grieved when it happens again, especially in an open place like this. But don't drive yourself too hard, my dear. You look weary. An occupational disease we all share. I'm afraid so. But you will handle this, and you'll have my full support in every way. Just let me know if I need it any time. Thank you. Well, I won't keep you any longer. God bless you. Uh, before you go, you might like to read this. Hmm? Something a little brighter, just for a change. You won't mind if I go on? Well, no, no, don't mind me. Uh, Mrs. Truscott, eh? Well, I, I never thought we'd hear from her again. She... Well... This really is most gratifying. I'm delighted for you. You deserve it. No more than anyone else concerned. I know better. 
Well, we must follow this up. Keep the contact. Yes, I'm going to write a personal letter. Do you like me to write as well? Very good idea. I feel the more encouragement she gets... Yes, especially at the beginning. Yes. I'll just take a note of the address, if I may. Mm. Now, I really will leave you in peace. Don't forget, any time. Padre, Hmm? Kate still doesn't want to speak. I think we should respect her reasons. I understand. Come. Gull, madam, on report. Well, I'll be off then. Uh, Good morning, Chief. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Gull. The chaplain spoke to you. Silly old fool. Bring her in, Chief. Forward to the governor's desk. Smartly. Back straight. Hands behind you. Face the governor. Report book, madam. Thank you. Good morning, Gull. Morning. Dress the governor properly. Good morning, madam. Read her the charge, Chief Officer. (coughs) Disobedience, swearing, fighting in the kitchen. Have you anything to say? You got it all down there. Yes, it's all here for the third time in six weeks. Just what is this feud between you and Cook? Cook? Call her a cook. Give her a cabbage and she bloody drowns it. Watch it. Damn it, it makes me sick. Gal, control yourself. If you swear again during this interview, you will go straight to the punishment room. Right? Answer the governor. Madam. I've been very patient with you, Gal. You've been allowed to use your talent for cooking, but you cannot take over the whole kitchen. I've given you chance after chance to behave yourself, and I will not tolerate any more. From now on, you will work in the laundry. Laundry? Yes. You will now go away and try to behave yourself. When you think you are in a proper frame of mind, you may come and see me and apologize. Then, and only then, mind, I may consider letting you return to the kitchen. Take her away, Chief. About turn. Smarty, and out. Uh, just a moment. Before you start your punishment, you may do something for me. Something you do extremely well. Will you take those flowers, please, and put them in water? Oh, you heard what the governor said. Here. Take them. I bloody won't. Try to flannel me. I'll smash them. There! Oh, look there! Oh, there's enough of them. You can stop your dancing flowers. Oh, come on and Oh, you bitch! Take her to the punishment room. Come along. Let me alone, you cow, you bitch. Let me alone. You kick off now. Don't you run away from me. You don't get me. May I come in, Laura? What was all the shouting? Gull. Why, did she do this? Oh, what a shame. All those flowers. Let me help you. Oh, it's done. If you just put it all in the waste basket. Look, there's one rose left undamaged. Oh, and another. I'm afraid that's all. I'll put them in this glass on the desk. Thank you. I'm afraid these outbursts are getting more frequent. I may have to consider getting her transferred. Oh, must we? We have a responsibility to the others. Well, she's never attacked anyone directly. Oh. Are you thinking she might have beaten Kate? No, no. She was on kitchen duty all morning. She has no access to Kate. Oh, that's a relief. I've taken her away from the kitchen. If she stays here, she'll work in the laundry. Oh, she won't like that. No one is here to like anything. Prison is a deterrent, not a holiday camp. Oh, it's surely enough to lose their personal freedom. This is an open prison. They have a great deal of freedom and certain privileges. And that reminds me, it's a small thing, but I feel I should mention it. Yes? I don't think Marcy should be given extra cigarettes. (laughs) What made her confess? She pulled that duster trick again. Right under my nose. (laughs) It's not funny, Frances. It has to stop. Oh, she's a classic recidivist. Out for the summer and in for the winter. Prison's her home. She'll probably die in one. What a failure for us. Oh, you're taking it too seriously. She's quite harmless. And cheerful and disarming and often very amusing. But it cannot be allowed to... Oh, for goodness sake. One cigarette. It's a game, Frances. When she scores, she chalks one up against us. It's got to stop. Oh, very well. I won't do it again. (laughs) She's a likable old devil in spite of her sins. Yes, but 
Unfortunately, we have to discipline ourselves as well as the prisoners. I wish I had your strength. Strength comes with experience. One can only do the job as one sees it personally. Oh, you've taught me a great deal. And it's been a privilege to work with you. Thank you. Uh, no, um, don't go for a moment. I've something to tell you strictly off the record. Yes? You know I was in London yesterday. I saw the consultative board. I shall be retiring from the service in the spring. Shall you be sorry? I'm getting tired. It's right I should make way for someone younger. Has, has anyone else... Been... I'm sure you will be amongst those considered. That shouldn't surprise you. Uh, Laura, would you be in favour of my appointment? The decision will be made by the Home Office. But you are likely to be asked for your recommendations. Does this mean so much to you? Yes. You realise you would be young to undertake it. You said strength comes with experience. Yes. Then, even in confidence, I cannot say anything more. Well, it was, it was generous of you to tell me so much. Francis, if you were to be disappointed on this occasion, be patient. You have one most precious asset, time. Oh, time for me is now. <sighs> Miss Oates? Yes, ma'am? I'll give you that letter for Mrs. Truscott. Yes, ma'am. On my note paper. Ready? Yes, ma'am. Dear Mrs. Truscott, I am most moved, uh, correction, deeply moved, by your gift of flowers. I have them before me on my desk. Kate? Um, oh. Oh, hello, Doctor. Nurse has made you a nice pot of tea. Oh. Will you sit up? No. Easy, Thank does you. it, man. No. Oh. <coughs> sort these oh. pillows out. Oh. So. Ah, now, how's that? Oh, comfortable. Good. How do you feel now? Stiff. Ah, uh, that'll wear off. Well, you've certainly had a good long sleep. How long? All last night and half today. Oh, no wonder... After all the dope you shot into me, <laughs> what on earth was in that syringe? Primarily poppy seeds. Not poppy, nor mandragora. Nor all the drowsy syrups of this world. Oh, oh you needn't look so surprised. I can quote Macbeth with the best of them. <laughs> Although I'll not say the lady herself is my favourite character. <laughs> the congenital hysteric, if ever there was one. Probably an epileptic, too. If that play had gone on long enough... To... <laughs> So what's so funny? It isn't Macbeth. It's Othello. Is it now? <laughs> and isn't he just well matched with her? Calling it jealousy when any doctor who knew his job would have diagnosed brain fever. <laughs> You've made me laugh. I didn't think I'd do that again. Not in here. Splendid. Laughter's a tonic in itself. Well, and hot tea. So drink up and complete the cure. <laughs> The uh, chaplain's here. He'd like to speak to you. Oh, must I? No one will force you. But. I know that tone. We won't make you, but it's an order. Oh, he's a wee misguided man at times, but he's very kind. He wants to help. How can he? Well, at least let him try. All right. Good girl, I'll fetch him. He's waiting outside. I'd not like to send him off disappointed. I'm away in, Reb John. I think I've paved the way a bit. She's there in the end bed. How is she? Physically, doing well. Spiritually, a bit low. But that's your business. And now you listen here. We don't want her brooding. I've talked my head off with a lot of daft nonsense to make her laugh. So you keep it light and lay off the hellfire. My dear Janet, surely hellfire is your speciality, not mine. Oh, touche. <laughs> hellfire, indeed. <laughs> Ah, oh, good morning, Kate. May I sit down? Please do. Mm, you're looking much better. Did the governor send you? Mm, she gave me permission to ask if I could be of help. Or coax me to confide in you? Oh, no, no, Kate. We're not devious. Let this matter drop. If not, you may well regret it, and I say this to you in confidence. But if I keep your confidence, how can I ask to have the matter dropped? I, I don't know, but I said in confidence. Oh, very well. 
Now, tell me, how's your family? Have you made plans for when you leave here? We'll be going to Canada. They've given Tom the transfer. Well, that's excellent. A completely new beginning, all the sadness behind you. Is your husband pleased? Yes. He'll be visiting tonight. Oh, and I must be out of hospital by then. I don't want him to know about this. Padre, no one will tell him, will they? I mean, if I... Kate, thought... Kate, don't distress yourself. Dr. Graham and the governor... But I have to be sure. You must be calm, Kate. Now, would you like me to see the governor? Hello, Kate. Miss Treadgold. I thought I'd just look in and see how you're getting on. Francis, I rather Well, think, only for uh... a moment. Oh, you look so much better, Kate. Do you feel well enough to talk? Talk about what? I suppose the governor sent you, too. After all, you are her deputy. No one sent me. Then Kate. why have you come? Well, couldn't we call it a social visit? You're far too busy for that. Well, the padre is here, isn't he? It's his job. And he's very kind. And he's not quite the same as the others. Not so official. I promise you I haven't come to be official. You've come to talk about this... this inquiry. Not necessarily. But you want me to talk about it. Francis... Don't you? Look, the inquiry has to be held, Kate. If you would help us, it would make things so much easier in oh, every way. Why can't you all leave me alone? Kate, my dear child. Please, please go away. All of you, go away. All right, all right, Kate. We're going, we're going. Come along, Francis. <laughs> sister? Oh, uh, sister, I think perhaps we should ask Dr. Graham to... Oh, really, Laura, the whole thing is becoming exaggerated. I hardly said a dozen words. Which seem to have upset her thoroughly. I can't imagine why. Apparently, Dr. Graham and the chaplain had been coaxing her along, even making her laugh. And you went in on quite the wrong note, the official one, and made her hysterical again. But look, I didn't intend... Why did you go, anyway? And without first speaking to either myself or Dr. Graham... But was that necessary for me? Of course it was. If you had spoken to Dr. Graham, she would have advised you not to see Kate at this stage. You really should have known. <sighs> oh, dear Francis. I'm sorry we should have to speak like this. If we just be a little less... Human? No, no, I didn't mean such a thing. But sometimes you do act without thinking first. Like giving an old woman a cigarette. In certain circumstances, that could be quite the wrong thing to do. Can't you see that? Uh, well, I begin to understand how you would see it. Obviously, we can't always agree. Is that such a bad thing in itself? No, but we should discuss it and not always work independently. Particularly as we have only a short time left to work together. Oh, yes, Laura. Of course, I'm very sorry. And you were quite right to speak to me. Thank you. And now you'll have to excuse me. The chaplain's having lunch with me, and I've already kept him waiting. <laughs> Trust you to have the right book to hand. Ah, uh, here we are. So what was your version? Um, for in that older time, when truth... Wrong. Thought... Elder time, not older. Disgraceful. I see it's translated by one of my cloth, which makes it even worse. How does it go on? For in that elder time, when truth and thought were still revered and cherished here on earth. Truth and thought revered and cherished. Elder time indeed. Come. Do I detect a note of bitterness? Lest my memory misserves me again, there's something further on about uh, hope and a great joy. One would like to think so. Uh, now, what is it you want to ask me? Oh, has it been so obvious? <laughs> you, you didn't invite me to this excellent lunch solely to discuss Caius Valerius Catullus, much as I've enjoyed both. So, what is the problem? Partly in my retirement, mainly Frances. So she's in the running, and you'll be sounded? Possibly. And what shall you say? That she's a most capable administrator with modern ideas and the zeal of the reformer. Hmm. Kind and scrupulous. And what do you really think? She speaks from impulse, acts on emotion, and is probably ten years too young. She may well work out her own progress. People like us, like you, 
have done fine work in the bad old days, but our times are changing, Laura, changing fast. Perhaps we've come too far too quickly. It's not so far back to the treadmill and the whipping post. That is brutality. I'm talking about discipline. Ah, discipline. I know. Today that's a dirty word. And what have we got without it? Increasing crime and this so-called permissive society with its drugs, perversion and legalized abortion. Laura... Permissive. Submissive. Submissive to any influence which avoids clear thinking and responsibility. Alas, the, there's no short answer. The church has the complete answer, but because it's not the easy one, it is not acceptable. Well, nevertheless, the truth is still clear, and many still follow it. This is not yet uh, an entirely godless world. Remember, hope and a great joy. But where have we gone wrong? What can we do? Pray and search for the reasons. Reasons or excuses? If you are telling me it is all a sickness or a question of glands, then I have no more tolerance. I'm merely going to remind you that uh, there are always the Mrs. Truscotts. Yes. I'm sorry, Padre. One mustn't forget the Mrs. Truscotts. Come in. Please, ma'am. May I have the dishes? Yes, take them. Padre, mm. I'm going down to my office. No hurry. Finish your brandy. I'll send someone up when we're ready to start. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> so, Marcy. Now, when are you leaving us for good? You're in and out as regularly as the calendar. Well, I got the authority of the scriptures, haven't I? The what? It's in the Bible. Plain as its own print. The Lord bless thy goings out and thy comings in. Marcy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Bible also says, forswear thy foolish ways. Nothing foolish about mine, sir. My late husband trained me, and he were one of the best dips in the business. He often told me about the real old days. Sovereigns, Padre. Mm. Thinking of picking up a quid in one go. Easy as pulling a daisy. Oh, I'm very glad progress has made that no longer possible. Ah, oh, progress is what's ruined us old ones. The wristwatch and the zip fastener. Of course, some of the youngsters manage. I have seen a zip once or twice. Cut out clean and sweet and neat as a piece of high-class surgery. <laughs> but not by my stiff old fingers. Well, I should hope not. And wrist watches. The old chain was the thing, with a fat ticker at one end and a sovereign purse at the other. <gasps> Beautiful. And I see you wear one yourself, sir. Hmm. Very unusual now, if I may say so. Oh, no, Marcy. Hands off. That belonged to my grandfather. Could I just have a look at the watch, sir? I haven't seen a good gold watch for years. <gasps> Lovely. All those links. My word, sir. Just look at your vest. Hmm? All crumbs. Let's brush you off, shall we? I got me duster. There. That's it. Thank you, Marcy. That'll do. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And now, could you just tell me the time? The time? Well, of course, sir. Why, Marcy... Don't panic, sir. I, I got it right here. In me duster, see? Lord, easy as picking a flower... And you looking so innocent. You wicked old sinner. Excuse me, Padre. The governor is ready now. Oh, thank you, Marion. I'll come with you now. And uh, you, Marcy, just be careful. God, saved be the bell. The poor old basket. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. This is, at the moment, an internal inquiry. 
Later, the results may have to be referred to the Home Office. Doctor, will you give us a report on Kate's injuries? Half a dozen nasty welts across back and shoulders, and a bruised eye, not serious. No concussion. She'll survive. And she won't say who did it or why? No, but whatever the reason, it mustn't happen again. Well, that's not very likely. Child killers don't, thank God, come in in weekly batches. No, you might like some details from her record. She came here last year on a 12-month sentence. She has been a model worker and earned full remission. The circumstances were tragic. Aren't they always? In this case, exceptionally so. As we all know, she's intelligent, educated, and of good background. So is her husband. They have uh, two other children, boys of four and six. The third child, a girl, was hopelessly abnormal. What are the medical details? Dreadful. If it had been an animal, it would have been put head down in a bucket. Oh, don't. Well, why not? What's the sane choice? Slide in a merciful needle or let it grow? And pray for a miracle? When the creator makes a mistake of this magnitude, he does not, in my experience, see fit to put it right. There are institutions. Yes, Miss Treadgold, and that's where we come up against sentiment. The mothers cling. Oh, I've seen it so often. Normal children sacrificed, marriages broken up. Yes, but apparently Kate kept the child for over a year. Oh, surely she could have been persuaded to part with it rather than... Put a pillow over its face. Is that what she did? Oh, dear God. And someone here took the law into their own hands. Well, if we had any starters, my money would be on Gal. She was nowhere near at the time. Well, nowhere near where? Do we know where the assault took place? Well, Kate was with the gardening party. I think it happened outside. Chief, would you ask Miss Collins to come in? Yes, madam. Oh, is that Ballantyne again? Really? Hasn't anything been done about that awful noise? I put through another memo yesterday, madam. Well, keep track of it, will you? Yes. Ah, uh, come in, Miss Collins. I want you to tell us exactly what happened yesterday morning, as far as you know it. I spoke to Ormond after breakfast, madam. She was quite normal then. Yes. The working party consists of 15 prisoners split up into groups. Miss Barnes and I keep an overall watch. Uh, can you see every individual all the time? More or less. Mm. At 10.30 there's a break. Suddenly we saw Walmer running towards the main building. She was obviously distressed and we ran after her. I met her in the hall and tried to stop her. She broke away and ran up here. Thank you. Miss Collins, think back carefully. Was anyone running or starting to run after Walmer? We saw no one, madam. Ah. Did you hear anything? Shouting, screaming? Nothing. Thank you. Does anyone want to ask Miss Collins anything else? Well, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Uh, no, no questions, Governor. Thank you, Miss Collins. That's all for the moment. Yes, madam. Thank you, madam. Both the chief and I have already questioned the members of the gardening party without success. If you feel there's anything to be gained by questioning them again now... Well, speaking for myself, if you and the chief have made no impression, I think we should be wasting time. I quite agree. Chief? Um, Miss Treadgold, yes. this war map here, well, it, it shows all the buildings and the garden. It's backed by the yew hedge, and here's the opening. Mm, yes, 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 I see. Uh -huh. Quite a big gap. Yeah, well, if you go through, the reception wing is almost directly opposite. Uh-huh. It's hardly used in the daytime, and the outer door's not locked. Oh. Yes, but surely anyone trying to slip through the gap would be seen. Yeah, well, look. The small tool shed's just by the opening. People are in and out all the time. There was more than one person. Huh? Why do you say that? Well, someone held her. Bruises on both upper arms. Now, look. Here. I took a couple of instant photos of the injuries. May we, so to speak, uh, put them into evidence? Certainly. Can you tell anything from them? I'd say the injuries were made with something narrow and flattish and fairly flexible. A belt? No, I shouldn't think so. The bruises suggest something harder. Look at the edges of the wheels. A gardening tool of some kind. Mm, perhaps. But what? Most working handles are rounded. You know, there's something about these pictures. I can't place it. A lawyer. 
What happens if we can't find out? We call in an official investigator. Uh, then it becomes a police matter. I want to avoid that. We get an atmosphere of sullenness and resentment which can last for weeks. Penalize a lot of them and be done with it. Well, that would be impracticable and unjust. Yes, the innocent would suffer for the guilty. They're all guilty of something or they wouldn't be here. We won't solve this by being over-scrupulous. The governor is right. It would be unjust. Now, look here, Rev. John. Loving kindness is all very well, but how many of them know the meaning of it? Well, well we, we, we need to set an example. Oh, please. Now, please. We shan't get anywhere by arguing amongst ourselves. Well, I'm sorry. I, I fear I was carried away. Oh, and I'm too forceful, Padre. Give me another cigarette. Oh, dear. Chief, will you see who it is? Yes, madam. Wish I could remember about those photos... I have an idea it might be important. I wonder whether it would be helpful to speak to Marcy. Marcy? Mm. She'd be the last to give anyone away. Well, she pops up all over the place, and she's very loquacious. She might inadvertently <laughs> let something drop. Madam, I think we have the weapon. One of the gardeners found it. Where? In the yew hedge. It's a lath from the old greenhouse. He said it wasn't there yesterday. What do you think, Doctor? Hmm. Very likely. See, the end's broken. Could be when she'd got away. It could be fingerprinted. Well, only if we call in the police and you don't want that. No. Perhaps I will speak to Marty. If that fails, I'll make the last appeal to Kate. When I spoke to her yesterday, she was adamant. In fact, she did say that if we press this too far, we might regret it. Madam, would you come to the window for a moment? There seems to be something wrong in the yard. Wrong? Well, they're not obeying the whistle. They're standing still in their lines. Oh, what's the matter with them, for heaven's sake? Well, I'd better get down there. Who is that speaking to Miss Valentine? Well, it looks like Valentine. Ah, uh, Valentine. There seems to be an argument going on. Marion, get me Valentine's file. Yes, madam. Well, they're still not obeying. Ah, here comes the chief. I hope she gives them hell. <laughs> Open the window, Reverend John. I don't want to miss this. What? At this height? Well, you, you won't hear the thing. I will when they start shouting... What's happening, Collins? I don't know, Chief. They won't obey orders. They won't say anything. Right. Now, what's all this about? If anyone has anything to say, speak up. Very well. I shall blow the whistle once more, and you'll walk into your rooms in an orderly and proper manner. Ready? <whistles> Do you hear me? Move. Not to wear us. We've got our right yeah. Once and for all. Tell her, Val! Yeah. Yeah. Valentine, yeah. come here. Yeah. What have you to do with this? They want me to speak for them. Huh? Speak up, then. What do they want? They, we, demand this inquiry be stopped. That's a matter for the governor. Governor! Oh. Yes, governor! Let the governor come to us. Shall we make the governor come to us? Yes! Do we know our rights? Yes! Valentine! Do we stand on them? Yes! No inquiry! No inquiry! Are we together? Yes! And there's your answer. Chief, if you expect the governor to come down here... Oh, not really. I mean, she couldn't, could she? But they like to think so. And I can make them think whatever I want to. Listen to this. Valentine. Listen. We don't want the governor to talk to us. We want to talk to her. Right? Right. We'll tell her. Yes. yes. You want me to tell her for you? Yes. yes. You hear that? A lot of stupid monkeys. They'd shout nursery rhymes if I told them to. Then tell them to behave themselves and march indoors. Oh, yes. Oh, it's taken quite a bit of hard work to get them to this stage. And it'll take you far more to get them out of it. So now, you can tell the governor I want to see her. What about? That's between her and me when we're face to face. <laughs> Suppose she refuses to see you face to face. She'd better, that's all. I warn you. She may not. Then you can tell her. You tell her I want to put a case and I have the right to do it. Tell her if she won't see me, then we all stay here. Stay? That's what I said. Stay here in our lines. We won't move or speak. Just stay. You can tell her that. She daren't say no. 
being ridiculous. I'll give you one last chance. You to go get... and tell her. Very well. I'll see what the governor has to say. Hooray! Valentine's been doing all the talking. Crafty devil. She always has an answer. Preferably insolent. What's she in for? Demonstrating principally. Well, that's not in itself a prison offence. Not to start with. She just went from strength to strength. Uh, the file, madam. Oh, thank you, madam. Yes, here we are. Uh, ban the bomb, Vietnam. Hmm. Not always political. Student grants. Hmm. Quite a list, and all those fines. What, uh, finally, put her inside? She seems to have widened her scope, inciting to violence. A brick through an embassy window. Oh, that old suffragette stuff. <laughs> and they think they're so up to date. So we got her. Have we thought of her in connection with Kate? Why, so far as I can see, she hasn't indulged in any personal violence. You disappoint me. Not even bitten a policeman. If she has, there's no official record. Madam, we appear to have a strike on our hands. A strike? What is that? Why? Well, they won't say. They want you to see their representative. Valentine. Yes. I'm to say that unless you agree to their terms, they'll stay outside indefinitely. An ultimatum? Yeah, they'd like to think so. You may tell them I accept no ultimatums nor conditions. Uh -huh. They will return to their rooms at once. No protests, no demonstrations. Then, and only then... I will hear what Valentine has to say. And uh, if they still refuse to move? They may remain there indefinitely. All the outside doors will be locked. Yes, madam. And, Chief? Yes, madam? You may also tell them I have all the patience in the world, and they have all the time. Right. Stupid fools. They know they can't get away with it. Valentine has worked them up. It must be to do with Kate. Mm. We'll know in due course. Laura, they may stay there all night. Well, that's their affair. But the place isn't enclosed. Some of them might break away. How far will they get? In uniform and with no money? Well, but shouldn't we compromise? No. There's uh, something unnerving about mass quietude. Look, they're standing like stones. That's better than throwing them. They're listening to the chief. Would you please come away from the windows? It's better at this stage to seem uninterested. Laura, I don't like this. Sit down, Francis. But, Laura... Sit I... down, everyone. We'll wait. Thank God. What now? Send for Valentine? There's no immediate hurry. We'll all go up to my sitting room and have a break for tea. Oh, what are they doing with their bloody tea? We've been here 20 minutes. And we shall wait another 20 if necessary. <sighs> so be quiet, Valentine. Oh, and keep still. Pardon me while I breathe. That will do. Quiet, will you? Here's the governor and the others. Oh, you have quite a good voice, Valentine. Have you ever used it apart from demonstrating? Madam? You might have organised a choir. That would at least have been constructive. Your record only shows a misguided ability for destruction. I'm not on report, madam. Not yet. What have you to say to me? Speaking as the elected representative of the people... The elected representative of the people is either a member of Parliament or the President of the United States. Stop this ridiculous play-acting and use simple English. I have been asked to see you. By the community? Or have you taken the whole issue upon yourself? Someone has to speak against injustice. What injustice? This inquiry. It must be stopped. Why? Walmer was punished by the will of the people. If this uh, is all you have to say, you're wasting my time and yours. It is our right to ask that this... Did you personally attack Walmer? No. But you know who did? Of course. And if you find out, you'll be sorry. You may not threaten, Valentine. Oh, not a threat, madam. Just a protest. You've been protesting for years, and where has it got you? Here. I have proved I will suffer for a cause. Nonsense. 
If you want to reform the world, it's your privilege to try. Screaming, shouting, and damaging property is not the answer. Oh, the suffragettes... Did not eventually gain the franchise by militancy. Do your homework. One day you should look up the records. See how many recent acts have been passed through the proper channels with intelligence and dignity. It takes too long. Are your methods any quicker? You're not a reformer, Valentine, nor a martyr. You're a bore. A bore? A bore. What? You and others like you. All you want is the limelight. Madam, You have you... deliberately used this situation to ferment trouble and bring yourself to the fore. I have done... The inquiry will continue. Take her away, Miss Collins. Come along. Smartly. Out. And for goodness sake, you silly girl, do as I say. Otherwise, you may find yourself in serious trouble. Trouble? <laughs> oh, not me, madam. I'm on the pill. Figuratively speaking, of course. Oh, not in here. There's only the parson, and I wouldn't fancy him. Valentine, you will go and stand in front of the chaplain, and you will apologize. But, madam, what for? You will do as I say at once. That is an order. No. You have two minutes. Then Miss Collins and the chief officer will remove you to the punishment room. And I shall personally see you lose all your remission. Madam, you... Two minutes. Sir, the governor wishes me to apologize. Thank you, Valentine. Take her away. Come along, Valentine. Da, da, I'm quite late. Da, da, Come da, da, on, now. I apologize again, Padre. That was inexcusable. My dear governor, it's an occupational hazard. I once had a 12-stone shoplifter spit with devastating accuracy into my right eye. <laughs> I take it you turned the other cheek. Alas, she was removed before I could exercise that privilege. <laughs> Chief, will you please fetch Marcy and bring Collins back with you? Yes, madam. Laura, are you putting them on a dietary punishment, the whole community? Yes. Hmm. That means everyone must be examined by Dr. Graham. It'll be a long job. Believe me, it will be a pleasure. <laughs> Please, ma'am, quiet there. Forward, face the governor. But I ain't done. All right, Marcy, sit down there in front of the desk. But I ain't done nothing, governor dear. Honest, not so much as a as a blinking doggy. Are you still running round collecting crockery? Why, it's me job, amongst other things. There appears to be a strike on. Aren't you included? Well, I'm only on a go slow. And what does that mean? I got a sort of, well, a special dispensation. It's me age, you see. And what does this entail? Well, I finish up me work today, proper like. After that, I takes me own time. Who told you to do this? I weren't exactly told, ma'am. I had a sort of note. You were not outside this morning. You didn't stand in the lines. You must have received instructions. Just the note. Have you got it there, in your pocket? Answer me, Marcy. I didn't want no striking, Governor, dear, but I had to go with the others. Give me that note, at once. There it is. It's a bit grubby. Thank you. I see. I take it everyone had one of these. How were they passed around? I'm not saying. Valentine, wasn't it? Well, since you seem to know, yes, it was. How did she distribute them? In a little cart, when she does the laundry. Why, that horrible little squeaking cart, and quite openly. Please, Francis. Marcy, I want you to tell me exactly what you did yesterday morning. I don't want to get no one into trouble. Padre, tell her I don't want to cause no trouble. Well, this isn't making trouble, Marcy. The governor has been very good to you. It's your duty to tell her. Honest to God, sir. Yes, honest to God, Marcy. Yes, sir. Well, governor, dear, after breakfast I cleaned me offices and then Miss Oates come up and she said... Take these flowers, Marcy, and put them on the governor's desk. Only I never did. Never did what? Put them on the desk. 
because there was Kate screaming on the windowsill. And Miss Treadgold said to get the hell out of it and get Gal to make coffee. And then, like she said, I made the coffee and brung it up smartish. That's when she gave me a fag. Remember, I told you. Marcy, did you make the coffee yourself? Yes, miss. But I especially asked for it to be made by Gal. Gal wasn't in the kitchen. She never is at that time. Oh, what? Why not? She likes to go out after a bit of mint or something. You know how she is with her blooming herbs. Every day at the same time. But surely, you know. Know about what? Why, Gal and Valentine. Oh, my God. Marcy. Permission to leave, ma'am? Permission refused. You will tell me exactly what you are talking about. I can't. I can't. I thought you knew. Oh, Padre, help me. Now, calm yourself, Marcy. <laughs> now, here, here you are. Take my handkerchief. <laughs> You can't draw back now, you know. You owe it to your conscience. People like me aren't supposed to act no conscience. Nonsense. Come on, blow your nose now. That's the way. <laughs> That's better. Now, tell the governor. If you say so, sir. Finish what you have to say. Gow and Valentine have a thing about each other. That's why Gal's always rowing with Cook. Well, what has Cook to do with it? She likes Val. Not in that way. But Val made her a dress in needlework class. So Gal thinks she fancies Val and gets flaming jealous and takes it out on Cook in the kitchen. And, and how often does this happen? You mean Gal and Val? Oh, whenever they can. Gal slips out for them herbs or some excuse, and Val's fairly free with her little cart. I understand. Governor, dear, I'm sorry, but it's not so bad. I mean, Val won't be here much longer, and I don't reckon there's anyone to take her place. If that's any comfort to you. Thank you. Come in. Oh, Miss Collins, just a moment. Marcy, one last question. Where do they meet? Mostly over in reception. It's quiet there. Were they there yesterday morning? I reckon so. I was shaking my duster out of the window, and I did see the little cart propped against the end door. Thank you. Take her to her room, Miss Collins. She'll share the punishment with the others. Please, Governor, dear. Yes? If you could not say you told you. That won't be necessary. Thank God. Governor, dear, you're a real gent. Come along now. All right. Smartly. Forward well, and as quick as yeah, right. Come along. Come along. Come along. Come along. Come along. Ah, well, well. So that's it. Well, what happens now? It's not a criminal offence. They can't be punished for it. You will separate them. Of course. Gal may have to be transferred. And Valentine? The present punishment. No need to be harder on her than the others. You're too lenient. The sheer calculating arrogance. Provoking a strike as a smokescreen for this. Oh, it's Gal I'm worried about. Oh, that poor devil's sick. Oh, she's certainly highly excitable. Always shouting and waving her arms about. Well, remember what she did to your flowers, Laura? tore them to pieces. Yes, she did. Well, at least we know who beat up Kate. Oh, they'll deny it absolutely. We can prove nothing. Maybe we can. Doctor, those photos, mm. you said something puzzled you. Still does. Is it possible those blows were made by someone left-handed? You may be right. Now, wait, now, wait. Let's, let's look. Hmm. Yeah, Miss Oates, have you got a ruler? Uh, here you are, Doctor. Ah, oh, thank you. Thanks. Now, what do you think? Well, obviously, whoever did the beating stood squarely behind her and not at the side. See, the wheels are too vertical, you see. Mm-hmm. So, now, using this ruler for the weapon, using the right arm, the wheels would go that way, which they don't. Or using my left arm, 
They would go that way, which they do. Well, Governor? Chief? Madam? Get Kate. Kate? I want Kate, Valentine, and Gull lined up here in front of my desk. Now, Madam? Now. Governor's clerk speaking. Yes. Yes, I see. Uh, hold on, will you? Madam. Yes? It's reception. Kate's husband is here. Walmer? Why? Well, it's his routine visit. No one knows what to tell him. He's a bit disturbed. Ask Miss Mayhew to bring him into the little waiting room opposite here. Yes. Tell her to be tactful. Just Kate's delayed. A matter of routine. Very well. Uh, would you like me to see him? No, I want this situation cleared up Go first. Go, straighten up. Warner, Valentine, Gow, madam. Bring them in. Miss Collins. Forward. Up here. Before the desk. Get a line there. Halt. Hands behind your back. And face the governor. <sighs> Has anyone anything to tell me? Kate? No, madam. Gull? Answer, Governor. Nothing to say. Very well. Have you always been left-handed, Gull? Why, yes, madam. I thought so. When you destroyed my flowers yesterday, you snatched them with your left hand. What's that got to do with anything? Kate was beaten by a left-handed person. Oh. No, no more denials or arguments. Why the hell should Gal... And you, Valentine, will do well not to interrupt. We know that you and Gal got Kate into the reception block and assaulted her. We know what with. Marion? Yeah, here, madam. Thank you. Now, don't tell me none of you has seen this piece of wood before. Are you going to tell me why you did it? Then I will tell you. Because Kate killed her child. What? <laughs> Go, you fool! Oh, Quiet, Gerald. Control yourself. Oh, kid! You're oh, Mary, kid! Who cares? It was because of the child. Tell them it was because of the child. Be quiet, Valentine. Child? It wasn't even human! <laughs> <laughs> now hold her. I told you. She's I going told to injure you. herself. Now hold her firmly. Let me go to her. Please. I told you I'd do it. You should have had those bitches alone. That's enough. I saw you. First beady, then warmer, smiling, touching. No. Pulling. No, Gal, you imagine. I that. ought to kill you, you flaming, filthy bitch. Ah! All right. She's out. Oh, my God. Now, stand back, please. Yes, it looks like a complete breakdown. It's probably been coming on for months. I should have known. I thought it was congenital bad temper. Now, don't start blaming yourself. You're not the first to be fooled by symptoms. Let's get her over to hospital. Give her a hand, Padre. Yes, of course. And hit, lift her slowly. Right. But somebody open the door. Yes, sir. I'll leave you to sort the rest, Governor. One way or another, this has been quite a day. Oh, let me go with her. Please, let me. Now, Valentine. She can't help it. She's sick. Are you sick, too? Oh, no, not basically. I do it for kicks. But, Gal... Th this may not be on her record. I, I think you should know. Yes? It happened when she was very young. About 17. There was this man. She was very fond of him. He lived on her earnings. It was he who put her on the game. Go on. Well, she got older, you see, and she didn't do so well for him. So he got rid of her. And it did something to her. She loathed men. She went les then. She had these dreams, fantasies. And she has to tell somebody. You? Yes. She needs me. In a way, I keep her sane. You know you should have spoken about this. Well, I didn't want it to be put away. And we got involved. Emotionally? Yes. So all the trouble started. The jealousy, the fighting in the kitchen. Oh, we'd settled that. No, the real trouble was Kate. Kate? It was a stupid mistake. 
I ran into Kate with my cart, accidentally. Well, I helped her up and brushed her down, and we were laughing, having a joke about it. But Gow saw us, and she thought... She said she'd beat Kate within an inch of her life. So? Well, yesterday I saw Gow speak to Kate and they slipped over to reception. She said she had a letter for And I got after them quick. Gow had knocked Kate down and was starting to beat her. I had to hit Gow. I grabbed Kate up by the arms and told her to get away. Is this all correct, Kate? Yes, madam. I hope you both realise how wrongly you've behaved. Did you honestly think you'd get away with that strike, Valentine? Oh, it was worth a try. Oh, damn it, I had to do something. Take her to her room, Chief. Yes, madam. I'll deal with this later. Leave Walmer here. Yes, madam. Come along, darling. No, wait a minute. What about Gal? She'll be very well looked after. But I want to see her. I must. No. Oh, madam, please, just for a moment. It is best not. But please. Yes, miss. Oh, how can any of you understand? You're all so secure. Come along now. Oh, yes, please. Behave yourself, girl. You're the major. Francis, just a moment, over here. Yes. Go and see Kate's husband. Explain things carefully to him, but don't mention the window incident. Make it absolutely clear Kate isn't harmed. I'll see him later. Right. Come and sit down, Kate. I just want to be sure there's nothing more on your mind. Madam, about yesterday, I don't think I really meant to jump. Everything seemed to pile up all at once. I'm sorry. Well, it's over now. And your husband is here. Tom? It's his routine visit. You're going to see him. Miss Treadgold is explaining to him now. So no more hysterics and no more self-reproaches. Valentine and Gao, must they be punished? Disciplined. It's the same thing. And they're sick and so unhappy. They can't help it. That's the oldest excuse in the book, Kate. And the weakest. If it were universally accepted, we'd have social chaos. We might have a kinder world. Kate. Tom, oh, Tom. Oh, I couldn't stop him, Laura. He already knows. It's true, Kate. You've been attacked. Tom, thank goodness. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, madam, but I was told there was nothing wrong. Then I heard all this screaming in here. Mr. Walmer, please sit down. Shut the door, Francis. Very well. I'm sent to the hospital, then, then over here, waiting and waiting, and then that little woman, the, the, the one they call Marcy, she brought me a cup of tea, and she said, if they tell you Kate's been beaten up, it doesn't amount to anything. Oh, I'm all right. But I want to know. Kate was attacked, but it's not serious. Not serious? You, you say that to me. Kate, attacked by some filthy... Kate, who shouldn't be here anyway. Tom, no. Look, I've been weak. And wicked. But not any longer. I, I'm going to talk to the governor. Tom, be careful. Madam, don't listen to she him. She must listen. Mr. Warmer, you're under great emotional stress. Before you speak to me, do you want time to think? <laughs> I've thought long oh, enough. Tom, please. Don't make it difficult. My <laughs> mind's made up. Madam, please... Help me. Is what you want to tell me something really serious? Yes. You realize I might have to take action? Yes. Very well. Sit down. Here, by Kate. Now, take your time. Tom, don't do it. Kate, I'm going to tell the governor, and you're going to tell it with me. It's over. It happened, and it's over. It's happening again now. I don't want to remember. Yes, you do. With me. Come on, Kate. Help me remember. Remember how it all started. And that evening when I came home early, I was elated. I was ten feet tall. I called Kate. Kate, wonderful news. Do you remember? Yes. You were bending over the cot. You told me to be quiet. It was nearly asleep. You wanted me to look at it. You never would, would you? I had to tell you about the transfer. To manage the Toronto branch, a new life, nearly double the salary, a house with a garden and a pool. I thought she might swim in the pool. She might even... <laughs> I shouted at you. Look at me for a change. I'm your husband. Look at me. I had thought. Just for a second, her eyes had focused. I wanted you to see no, it. No, he didn't want to see it. I said it should be in a home. 
with its own kind and people properly trained to look after it. You couldn't have put it in a home. We had a responsibility. Responsibility to what? A set of paralyzed muscles and a non-existent brain. Do you remember the christening? Tom. I shall never forget it. The embarrassed little group round the font. Godparents making impossible promises. Tom. Even the priest, he didn't say receive and bless this child. He said receive and help this child. I should have said God help the parents and the other children of this marriage. Oh, stop it, stop and it. And he lay there in his arms, a mass of frills and lace, decked out like a bloody sacrifice. <laughs> Only we were the sacrifice. I wasn't going to be sacrificed any longer. Seeing you devoted to a vegetable and uh, uh, nothing. The boys were devoted to. They hated it. You know they did. When David's puppy died, he said, why couldn't that have died instead? You kept calling her it and that. If you remembered the christening, you might have remembered she had two good names. Oh, that's what you said that evening, didn't you? Two good names. And I went right over the top and shouted there was only one name, Monster. <laughs> so she struck me, madam. Stepped back and struck me hard across the face. You didn't understand. Oh, I understood, all right. It was my child, too, wasn't it? My seed. Wasn't I humiliated? And guilty. No one's guilty. These things happen. I wanted that job and I'd worked for it. So I made the decision. I said, we're going overseas where we're not known. Just you and I and the boys, a normal family, free and forgetting. I told you I could never have lived with myself. And I asked if you were going to live with me. I wanted my wife. And the boys wanted their mother. I'd never at any time neglected you. Oh, physically, no. Mentally, we didn't exist. That wasn't fair. It was the ugly truth, and I made you face it, didn't I? I was sick of the bitterness and resentment. So little to ask. Another child, a normal girl child, a simple biological process. And look what we got. Madam, how could I just put it ruthlessly out of our lives? I couldn't make you realize that it wouldn't stay small and helpless forever. It was going to grow. And perhaps in It was 15 months old. It could have lived 15 years, 25. Would you still have coped? We've been told from its birth that there was no hope. There was patience. We had to wait. And what would have happened while we waited? You were already worn out at 28. What was left for me? When I touched you, you were under stress, exhausted. Perhaps the governor will understand. I wanted my wife. Oh, Tom. I took her in my arms, madam. I begged her. I tried to make her respond. And she fought me off. And one of the boys called from upstairs and I ran out of the room. Leaving me alone with that. I got a drink. A strong one. I remember saying, here's to your future, Tommy boy, the glorious, bloody, shining future. And suddenly, I began to wail. A thin wail like a rabbit or a sickly kitten. I saw at it lying there, wailing away our lives. And I finished my drink and made myself go over to the cot. And then for the first time in months, I, I looked at it. Oh, Christ. There was a small pillow under its head. No lace or frills this time, just a small, sensible pillow. I pulled it out. And it was so easy. Just a little pressure. Very little pressure. Afterwards, I vomited down on the floor beside the cot. And he broke the glass. When I came down, he was sitting, shivering, among all that mess of broken glass. 
You can tell the rest, Kate. That's where we made our big mistake. I let you override me. I let you take control. It was my fault, wasn't it? If I'd let the baby go away, it wouldn't have happened. When I saw her dead, I could think clearly at last. And I knew I was going to say I did it and was going to stand by that. Why, Kate? We had to protect the boys. If Tom had been sent to prison, he'd have lost his good job. I'd have had to battle on alone. And after, he'd have had to start again with a record. I didn't agree, of course. What man worth anything would? I was sure I would get the sympathy and light sentence, and Tom's company would be good to him, which they have. All she would say was, if you go to prison, what will happen to the boys? It was my fault, and I should take the punishment. I wonder which of us has been punished most. She was so calm, madam. So strong, like rock. And not once, from first to last, did I see her cry. Oh, yes. You all know, madam. They put me in Holloway on remand. And that first night, when they shut the door, and suddenly I knew I was alone. Oh, Tom! My baby! My poor, poor baby! <laughs> So that's it, madam. Now you know. Thank you for telling me. How soon can Kate be released? I can't possibly tell you that. She's here for something she didn't do. I want to make a written statement. Oh, no, Tom. Are you sure? Yes. Once you've made such a statement and signed it, the matter becomes official. Will you please be very certain that is what you want? Yes. Will you talk it over with Kate first? No. She's too strong. I let her persuade me before, and it was wrong. Tom, leave it alone. Let it rest. I can't, Kate. You know I can't. Madam? Very well. You may sit down and write here. There's pen and paper, all you want. Thank you, madam. Marion? Yes, madam? Please ask the chief officer to come to my office. Yes, madam. Straight away. Thank you. Before you sign that, let me see it. Yes. It's almost done. There. Mm. Yes, that's very concise. Now, I want you to add a paragraph which I will dictate. Ready? Yes. I have made this statement voluntarily at my own request. Mm. I have not been influenced... One moment. Not been influenced mm. in any manner whatsoever in the making of it. Have you got that? Yes. Thank you. Now, you may sign. Add the date after your signature. Come in. You sent for me, madam? Yes, Chief. Take Kate back to hospital. Mr. Warmer may go with her. Give them the rest of the evening together and see they have a meal. Yes, madam. I will see them again before Mr. Warmer leaves. But I must know what... Tom, leave it to the governor. We'll do whatever you say, madam. I know you'll be fair. Well, this way, please. Marion, will you get me the home office? Prisons department. Yes, ma'am. Laura, I want the chief director of women's prisons. If he is not available, I'll speak to the assistant director. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Laura, you're not going to refer this. What else? Well, there can only be one answer. The matter will be passed to the police. Yes. I don't have to tell you the sequence... He'll be charged, remanded, and committed for trial. All that agony to be gone through again. What they've done will have been for nothing. I have no choice. He's made an official statement. But it's still only between the four of us. Oh, I shall repeat nothing. Remember what Kate said. We will do whatever you say. He wanted to make the statement. All these months he has lived a lie. But you can sway him. Are you asking me to come between a man and his conscience? Oh, damn conscience. 
This is a matter of survival for a whole family. You mustn't be emotional. If I were not emotional at this moment, I would not be human. That's understandable, but you must use self-control. Are you made of stone? Oh, it might be easier if I were. Don't do it, Laura. Don't start the wretched business again. They might end up broken, destitute. You're running ahead of yourself. Jewelries are not made of stone either. You are a hard woman. Laura, please. I'm afraid there's a delay on the line, madam. Yes, I see. Uh, connect me as soon as possible. Laura, there's still a chance. Cancel that call. Francis, don't be foolish. Oh, is there nothing I can do to It would be you... easier if you went away and left me to make the decision. I want you to realize what you were doing. Do you think I don't realize? Do you think I want to do this? Then tear up that statement. Would you deliberately conceal the truth? Truth? What is the truth? Someone else asked that question 2,000 years ago. I can't remember it helped him to make the right decision either. I know what I would do in your position. Be thankful you are not. You'd better go, Francis. I had a chance. Once. Chance? To be in your position. That is in the future. No. You've never been in favor of my being governor. We can't discuss that. No. You wouldn't recommend me now. You think it is weakness to ask for compassion. Francis, I can only do what I know I have to do. One day you may find yourself in the same situation. No. I once said it would have been a privilege to work with you. After this, I cannot work with you again. I should resign. Oh, Francis, don't be so dramatic. In a few weeks, you will retire. Would it be so terrible, just for once, to bend the rules? Now, please. Or are you looking ahead to the honest list? Francis. Will you sacrifice two people for the sake of a possible DBE? Please leave my office. I shouldn't have said that. I know it can't be unsaid, but I'm sorry. Believe me, Laura, I am truly sorry. Thank you. You're right, of course. I should not make a good governor. I am impulsive. I should do the wrong thing for the right reasons. I don't have your strength. But later, out of that strength, perhaps you can forgive me. Francis, I... Yes? You're heard from the home office, madam. The chief director is on the line. Thank you. Put him through. You can still do it. You need only refer the matter of Valentine and Gar. Oh, Laura, think. Please, think. <sighs> this is the governor speaking. Dame Flora Robson starred as Laura Fenn in The Inquiry by Charlotte Hastings. Vanessa Lee played Francis Treadgold. The rest of the cast was as follows. Kate Walmer, Pat Pleasance. Tom Walmer, Nigel Graham. Valentine, Elizabeth Proud. Dr. Janet Graham, Kathleen Helm. Reverend John Shillito, Godfrey Kenton. Marcy, Marjorie Forsyth. Probin, Diana Olson. Collins, Margot Boyd. Gow is Anne Churchman, and Marion Oates was Carol Boyd. The inquiry was adapted for radio by the author from her stage play of the same name. The production was by Graham Gould. <laughs>